where to begin? There's so much to say. Tim uh, has been an anchor for the center for 30 years. He was on the ground floor of beginning it in 1986. He is a renowned papermaker, uh, a Fulbright winner that launched his career. It's really with Tim, there's a fascinating mix of on the one hand, he's a kind of storyteller, and on the other, he's a walking archive. On the latter point, as a walking archive, he just knows things that aren't written down in books, and he's been able to share that knowledge with students and, again, transmit for the future a kind of set of skills and craft-based knowledge that otherwise wouldn't exist. In terms of storytelling, he transmits it through stories, so it's a sign of what a great teacher he is. Tim is so much a piece of the Center for the Book, and he's been here the longest of any of us, and he's one of the sort of early core people and I'm a person who thinks about history and trajectories you know and so the program started as um, a place to print literature you know and Tim came in as a person to make paper for the printer and he he turned it into this amazing experience for so many people. Well I was really uh, pretty foolish I think when I first got into to paper making because I had no idea how I was going to make a living at it and you know even when I went to Japan to study the craft under the Fulbright Fellowship there were no paths forward for a career in traditional hand paper making technique. There were other contemporaries who were trying to set up businesses and make paper for sale but I was almost reckless. I was just passionate about paper making history and technique. I had no idea how I was going to make a living and Kim Merker here at the University of Iowa was setting up the Center for the Book in the early 80s and he managed to convince the administration at the time that if there was enough talent already on campus that if they could bring in a specialist in bookbinding and a specialist in papermaking that they'd have the essence of a, a Center for the Book here at the UI that would be unique and I was very lucky to be on Kim's radar he knew that having published a book was important, that having done lectures and workshops around the country was a big deal. I did all that stuff, but never with the idea in mind that I would get a job at a, at a university. I just didn't realize it was important. I did it all because I felt I had an obligation to or I wanted to share. Watching the way that he teaches and engages with people and the way he stays in touch with them and the way that he's totally focused down when he's here and then expansive when he's not here. So he, he puts himself out into the world um, undyingly optimistic and ambitious. <laughs> His reputation kind of precedes him and, and you're so I was so excited to meet him and I couldn't um, believe that I was going to have that opportunity when I was looking at the Center for the Book. I felt like, okay, this is somebody who can help me solve problems, who will be critical when that feedback is needed, but really just wanted to help and I could really sense that uh, from my first time meeting Tim. At the time this project got underway, late 90s, they decided to build new encasements for the Charters of Freedom, so the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Those original 1950s encasements were degrading and they wanted some paper to sit beneath the documents which were all on parchment. We've kind of uh, going back to that story time and time again because it's a good one, and especially a good one I think for people in the state of Iowa who just don't understand why the universities exist. I mean, what are you guys doing that really matters to me? And that's a great story because it's definitely something to be proud of. It's funny if you go to the National Archives Rotunda in Washington, D.C., where these documents are, you can stand in line and when you get up there, you look inside the case, you can get up real close to these documents and you, if you look off to the side, you can see this white piece of paper under there. That was a high point. I 
Everybody went in the center for the book, and I think at the University of Iowa started thinking, okay, what does this mean? What does this mean now? The provost at the time got wind of the fact that after the MacArthur came in, he, for me, he came over to see a tour and he found out that we didn't have an MFA. And he said, well, why don't we? And since John and Matt had already been hard at work on this, it, that came to pass pretty quickly, so. He's won a MacArthur grant and that signals him as a genius, right? But what did he do with that award? Well, he immediately kept learning, kept teaching, he broadened his perspective, he worked on global ways of understanding papermaking. He introduced visiting scholars in a Mellon-funded seminar on global manuscript culture. The one thing I'm going to continue to do for sure with the Center for the Book, in addition to helping with Fulbright proposals, is uh, fundraising. It's something that's badly needed right now, and I look forward to helping them nail this uh, two and a half million dollars we have to raise to match a two and a half million dollar challenge grant we have right now. That would be the icing on the cake if we could make that happen. We're going to make it happen, so one way or another.